Welcome to the Point of No Return podcast, a show at the intersection of technology and strategy. On this show, we interview industry leaders and experts to better understand how they think about strategy during this time of exponential progress. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Point of No Return podcast. I'm your host, Nectar. I have a special guest today, someone I've been trying to get on the show for a little while, Martin Aubu, who's Vice President of Transformation and Strategic Innovation at Cogeco. Uh, Martin is a really well-known uh, exec- executive and entrepreneur in, in the Quebec community, in the Canadian community, I would say, having had multiple roles, uh, transformational roles, I want to say, at L'Oréal uh, and now at Cogeco, where he leads, uh, you know, basically innovation for the entire company. Uh, and Cogeco, for the people that are not familiar with the company, is one of the largest Canadian telcos. Uh, Martin and I had a really great conversation, uh, one that really, uh, I think, showed uh, some great insights and how Martin really thinks about business transformation. We both kind of like <laughs> hate on the word digital transformation. And Martin really explained how he sees the role of technology digital within an established large enterprise. And it's because he's been doing it for a long time. So we spoke a lot about entrepreneurship as, as his role has always been about building teams, uh, how he focuses on the customer journey. And I think this is a really important insight that he shared in terms of like how do you actually, you know, uh, nail a, a business transformation? A lot of it starts with a customer and then followed with how, you know, what, what you're measuring, right? The, the role of data in that. Uh, and we had a really wide ranging conversation. I learned a ton. Uh, Martin is a true inspiration. He had some great words of wisdom for people that are maybe younger in their careers. And I think that you will enjoy today's episode. Thank you. So Martin, I guess the first question uh, I'd like to ask you is, uh, you, you know, you've obviously been in the, in the digital, quote unquote digital space for a long time. When did you realize that, you know, uh, you wanted to work in tech and in digital and this was like, it, it's become a passion, it's become a career for you? Actually, um, it's been like 20 years, maybe. You know, it's been a while. I'm, I'm 42 and I don't care my age, you know, um, it's maturity. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm from Quebec City. Uh, I've done my university in the uh, Université Laval and I've always been really close from, uh, you know, like at that time, internet was not what is it, it's now, right? It was at the beginning pretty much. And I was really like always close to innovation, what we can do with that. So pretty much 20 years ago, we're starting to, to develop web page with front page, you know, like things like that. So uh, it's been 20 years and, and, and what would, was really my, uh, my core a moment uh, on this is uh, I started to, uh, that was kind of my second job. It's called Les Logiciels Avantage. And I met this guy, Jacques Castonguay. He gave me pretty much white card, right? And he said, we have a software company, want to sell it to Bell. He put everything, his, his house, you know, everything into that. And he gave me like, I was a, a kid, right? And he said, do whatever we have to do when we need to create value, sell the business. I said, okay. So pretty much, uh, I built a CRM system, start to, to work with data. So that was a playground actually. And that was kind of natural for me to bridge tech and the business side. And after that, they said, okay, a good strategy. You have to go on the field, sell and so on. So I was able to develop a new distribution channel. So building my CRM, testing the strategy. We're starting to sell online at this time, right? Uh, 18 years ago for the upgra- upgrades of our solution. So that's where it happens and, and where really like I had the epiphany. It's when I was at Réseau Contact. I was kind of the, I was part of the pioneer team on, on this. And this was everything I learned about digital ecosystem, growth hacking, product market fit, ways of working in agile and so on happens at Réseau Contact. Uh, it's been a while, right? So that, that was really like. Is it still around actually? Oh yeah. Réseau Contact still around. Media Griff bought it. And so it's more for older people, maybe like me now, but it's the, <laughs> there was a tender of my time before, you know, Réseau Contact, what is really interesting into that in this little story, it, they, they created the guys before I arrived, they created a LinkedIn, before LinkedIn, right? There was like two ID and training, search engine and trying to find the right match for business, but people were not willing to pay and they're still not willing to pay on, on, on LinkedIn. It's a ad model, right? But people were willing to pay for uh, finding friends uh, or maybe love and maybe sex, right? So pretty much we, uh, at that time, I was just for geek and my job was to bring it mainstream. So when it happened, I, I just remember this, this day was really cool is uh, we, um, 
we've done a survey with Leger Marketing and 51% of Quebecers said that it was normal to go on websites to meet. And at this moment, pff, it, it booms, right? Quebecar purchase it, uh, create Occupation uh, Double, uh, they, they create a TV show, and uh, it was pretty much Convergence, so offline or online. So that was really, really cool. And, and yeah, it, it still works and it was really big at that time. And we had the, the idea on Tinder, but destiny made that didn't do it. <laughs> it was also early too right because like you were there in like mid 2000s right so mobile was still not still not there as yeah much, right? mo mobile actually we, cre we created the first the first thing of mobile dating that was really fun is yeah like two phone so you didn't end up have like smartphone was uh, so you were going in a club right so geo marketing and you were like saying like i'm a i'm a man looking for a woman or uh, vice versa people can uh, decide what what they're looking for different information and the system was matching calling the two people in the same place chat if they like it they meet so that was pretty much an ancestry of the system wow, right oh yeah so uh, yeah yeah and, and after that so we smartphone arrive and so on and, and we're totally on the idea but yeah sometimes life you know a lot of entrepreneurs like this uh, you had the idea but you didn't do it so it was just a powerpoint so who cares yeah yeah it's a yeah it's a question of timing too right timing like a great yeah. idea but a bit too early yeah. so like going back to my question it, so it wasn't a master plan of like as, as a no. young age you just happened to come to the space and then you started you were part of these you know great rides and great quebec companies yeah i, I actually i don't have plan i don't have a carer plan that's not how it work actually actually it's organic and at this moment what i'm really good at it's to solve complex problems. I, I was at the university and my friends said, what you want to do? Some people want to go in advertisement. Some people, they, they were really clear. I want to be an accountant. I want to be this, this, this. Me, I was, I want to solve complex problems. And technology is helping me and then helping us more and more now with capabilities to solve complex problems. So that's how it happened. And technology moves so fast. So I had the chance to, to be at the beginning of the wave of Web 2.0. So I was in San Francisco, I remember, with uh, Daniela Robichaud. It was the first first time. And we we, we, we built at Quebec R, uh, Espace Canoë. was before Facebook. It was a, a social community. Um, you know, like Réseau Contact, uh, dating site, that was the first uh, community, like uh, social networks, we can say. So I had the chance from that to be at the beginning of the wave, mobile waves, cloud, AI, and so on. So it, it was more like new tools to uh, pretty much... Uh, solve pro complex problems so that was not a career path at all yeah but at the same time you you know you, you've written that you know the, the concept of entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship for yourself is i think it's something i want to dive into a little bit because you've been part of yes you've worked for big companies and executive positions and in, in some smaller companies as well though you haven't necessarily founded something on your own but the way i see your profile is that you're part of building teams and uh, being an entrepreneur internally Right. So you've, you've been able to not just, you know, you're not in a nine to five job. You're there to take something and, and build it from scratch, but within within this, the structure of something that exists. You have it totally right. So how I perceive myself now and, and I prep for this interview and and I can say now I'm an intro, I'm an entrepreneur. So, you know, I've, I co-found with Malik uh, M. Kutso. That was really hard. We learn a lot. But, you know, I found things. But now I'm an entrepreneur. So burn rate is different. Right. So <laughs> yeah, pressure on cash, pressure and on cash and so on. So this fits me really well at this moment. I'm an entrepreneur, but I still like enjoy investor and entrepreneurship and so on. But when you look at transforming, you look at it's like a startup, right? You say, OK, where we stand, what is the problem to solve? After that, what is the team, tech, process, people? What is the strategy? And you just grind it, right? You go with as is your company. Usually, uh, I try to give myself three to five years to make it happen. So everybody counts, right? I want, I want to create value for the organization. The, st the, the stock should go up. The team is, is, is what well, is going to be autonomous to operate. And I want to do another one. I'm never there as a career move. That's a, I'm an entrepreneur totally. Yeah. 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 Well, it's the same, it's the same fiber, right? Like found, founding something from scratch or building it within a yeah. company. Sure. There's different. It's the burn rates sets. different. Yeah. To, you know, burn rate and uh, politics. You know, exactly. Yeah. But and politics, when you have more than two people, you have politics anyhow. In startup, <laughs> you can have politics. So I guess it's just part of the game. Yeah. And it's more cultural things in the organization. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, and then, so going back to one of your last roles, right, you were chief digital officer for yes. six, seven years, I think, at L'Oréal, and you built up that team. And uh, speaking right before we started recording, it was very uh, precocious of the company to, to launch such a huge foray into digital at the time they did. So I'm curious to hear about your role there and some of the accomplishes, accomplishments. Yeah. The, for, first, L'Oréal, when I think about it, it's a great company. Uh, it's amazing. It's a structure chaos. It's all about creativity, nice brand. Uh, worldwide platform that you localize, right? So first, L'Oréal, and thank you very much for, I was really lucky, you know, it was not in my career path to become a cosmetic, a cosmetic <laughs> expert, right? So, so well, how it arrived pretty much, a uh, quick story, uh, big story short, pretty much. It's uh, the CEO, I met the CEO, Ravian, Ravia San Juan, he's a great man. And he looked at me in the eye and he said, you know what I want to do? I said, no, I said, I want to own digital beauty. You know, that was, you know, yeah. it's, like, it's like that. Like, it's like a theater, right? Yeah. I want to own digital beauty. I said, oh, wow, this is a big ambitious. Yes, yes, yes. I see that coming, right? I see commerce coming. TV not uh, reaching as much as, you know, so the guys was proactive. And he said, so what you do about it? I say, uh, I've done different transformation and so on. So it will be tough and so on. But so I say, where you want to start? He said, I don't care. It's your job. Give me a white piece of paper. And they say, write what, what we have to do. So I say, wow, this is a real entrepreneurship. So this is, I think, the right framework for me. I started, it was, a, they call it a senior director, interactive. You know, at that, that moment, 2011, it was interactive. So, yeah, when I worked, I, you know, it's, it's a small uh, interruption. Yeah, like I worked at an agency in 2004 and it was interactive. Yeah, interactive. Was like, that was the term, right? And, and so pretty much uh, I said, okay, good. So I, I, I told him, uh, you know, transformation is hard. It's never easy on people. On you have to change the culture with a fork. He say, "We're good. We go. We want to go. We're L'Oréal, right?" And his ambitious was to uh, to drive the innovation from Montreal for the world, right? That guy was looking really big. So, uh, so I started to look, and pretty much my role was to this, this design what would be the few, the vision, right? And I was in uh, many meetings at L'Oréal, and every meetings. 38 brands, right? So every brand is a small organization. So I had to convince 38 ent- entrepreneurs. That was really interesting. And they, all, they were always talking about product units, product units, channel distribution was Walmart. And it was always that. And I, and I asked the question, I first said, what about your customer? Who are you selling to? About Walmart that sell to this type of, of target. So I like, oh. So the challenge, I guess, was not like a digital transformation. It was a transformation on from a product-driven organization to a customer-centric organization. It's like they lost a little bit sights about what customer wants, what is a new channel, what is a new ways of, of shopping beauty at digital age because channel change, behavior change, and so on. Insta- Instagram was just starting. Facebook was there, right? So pretty much my mandate was transformation of an organization that will become a product-centric organization. A customer-centric. Yeah, so that was my job. Yeah. First, first line on the white piece of paper. After that, the how. So what we decided to do, what we found as an opportunity, we say, okay, we see different channels starting to come. Amazon was not big in Canada. You didn't, did not have Amazon.ca even, right? So, uh, so we said, okay, let's start to sell online first. 2011, that was not that much, right? So from our brands, direct to consumer. So they were not doing that before. There was Walmart, Farmapri, there was distribution channel. So uh, nobody wants to do it uh, in the organization. They say, wow, no, uh, not ready, what, what the distributor will say. And we fought and we say, let's do one brand. And after that, we'll see if it fits for the other one. And so at the end, we launch 20 brands direct to consumer. First year, we're about to drive it to really to, uh, to be able to make money. And this opened up to the all new ways of managing the organization. So the way they were looking at PLs and strategy, because we were able to have the end-to-end relationship between the, 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 the consumer and us from what they were looking in media, what was the driver in media to, you know, it's your stuff. <laughs> it's your stuff. You're an expert into that conversion. And after that, what is our top customer for higher CLV? And after that, build a media mix and the strategy around the top consumer. And after that, you go and so on and so on. And from that, we decided to say, oh, media, we can control it now. So we internalize programmatic, we, we build a programmatic desk in house. So we internalize media. 
So we, we took agency a little bit out, bring it what it was core for the new metier or the new world. And we had a really good team being able to manage an end-to-end relationship from the consumer, from the prospect to a retained consumer. Yeah. So yeah, my role at the end, we create the team, the technology stack, the data science team. And from that, the objective was not to create a big empire where like 90 resources for a while. But I always say to the organization, I want to bring it back to the brands to make sure that it's becoming the new normal of management at digital age and not a digital hub. It was new ways of, of managing. So at the end, after seven years, pretty much I had 10 people, less than that. But everyone was dotted line into transforming every unit. And I was becoming the new ways of doing marketing at digital age. So that was the mandate. I was really proud of that. We had three re, three core objectives. That was 20% in e-commerce sales, 100% love brand. So that means, you know, organic were number one in SEO, Facebook, social, and so on. And after that, 50% of our uh, consumer was in our database to do one-to-one marketing. So three core objectives, really simple. Build a team, ways of working, put in place a stack, make happen a strategy, measure success. And after that, now L'Oreal, you know, like the share is at 252 euros. When we started, it was 100. And from Montreal, we're a, one of the hub of innovation for the, the world. So we created like a forecasting tool, leveraging AI. We're part of uh, the purchase of a muddy face, you know, like this is a Toronto business. Face recognition that now is all around the world. So Montreal was an innovation hub. So we reinvest into ecosystem, startup ecosystem. I was really proud of that. Yeah. That was yeah. so fun. It's a great organization. But now I'm at Kojiko. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to Kojiko in a second. I just want to go back to uh, something you mentioned about the, you know, the starting point of w- how you developed the strategy for L'Oreal. Yeah. And uh, we were kind of like joking before about, you know, the whole concept of digital transformation, how it's really outdated. And the, if there is a si- singular definition, which I don't believe there is, which is why I kind of despise the term, but it's, it's about the customer. It's starting with the customer, right? And that I found was, is quite uh, insightful on, re- on your behalf. I was like, okay, how does, how did L'Oreal tackle it is by, starting with a customer starting with their experience and like like you said it's like everyone's talking about like sales and like retailer relationships but it's like hey guys like who are you actually selling to how do we like satisfy you know their uh, their needs how do you build a love brand how do we have more data about these people like oh those are all the components of what you know you know if you were to just you know explain what the transformation what it really is versus you know like it or erps as as, as i often hear in, in this market so uh, it sounds like it was a super fun ride. And uh, so after seven years, um, to, to go into the career transition, right, where you obviously you're super, super pleased with the results, like you just named some of them off. Uh, what made you think that it's time for a move? Yes. Um, I just want to back up one, one thing. Uh, when you say, you know, like um, the transformation, the flow you just described, this is pretty much a framework. It's a framework of, of uh, I call it the pragmatic transformation framework so pretty much i'm writing a book now with my girlfriend oh very cool yeah because she she was part of uh, bn bank national now she's transforming try to transform actually uh, hydro quebec so um and 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 it's a framework so we're building this framework and i'm sure you're using closely this framework too so it's it's all start with uh, customer journey mapping that's what you, you mentioned it's a powerful tool and pretty much this framework that i've done like along the years at Quebec and after the Avas, arrive after that to L'Oréal. So this actually it's 70 to 80 percent of the framework that you can reuse in different industry, right? Is this public? Is something that? Uh, but not yet, but okay. it will. It will be. We're ro- working on this now. The, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say I would love to like share it and put it in the May, show notes. But, but I guess I will. I will. I will love to have you interview. It will be my time to interview you, <laughs> right? It's good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, we got a deal. Yeah. So my point, just to say, it's what you said. It's totally that. I got eight points in the framework, and and I'm using it at Kojiko. Well, so, come back to your, your question. Uh, I was at L'Oréal. I was really, ha- really pleased. And, and actually, I said to Mr. the CEO, Mr. San Juan, I said, for me, it's a gig of three to four years. And pay me on results. And after that, I'm doing another one, right? I'm not an operator. And he said, you will see at L'Oréal, we'll always find you fun stuff to do. And he was right. Well, I stayed there like for seven, seven years and a half. And next move was to go internationally, uh, transform uh, small countries or mid-sized countries within like the same framework we built in Canada. And 
was long and so on. And I was really looking to grind. And like an entrepreneur, when it's you operating, you're kind of having your next things to do. So I was there. And I had to decide, am I going, staying with the family here? I decided to go to stay in Montreal. And I want to have impact. And my frame, frame of thoughts on this is I want a company that I can really bring value, that they are willing to change. So appetite is there and the stock is lower that we can drive the stock higher. So at the end, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. So the benefits of it or my ROI, personal ROI is that. So if we do the good job, we deliver the customer what they want and the way they want it, stock should rise because you serve better, you lower your costs, you, have, you increase your sales, you get your market share and financials are happy and stock go up, right? So that's, and Kojeko, that was perfect fit for that. So a company that has been like built in 1957 from Henri Audet, you know, like in Trois Rivières, started in Trois Rivières. So, you know, that was a real Quebec uh, fleuron, right? Yeah. So I thought it was the, the good fit. And actually, uh, I, I, I really understand the appetite for change, the timing. You talk about timing that was there, you know, like they changed the system, was kind of, uh, they needed a guy like, like me and building the right team, right process and right tech for the right strategy. And pretty much uh, that's, that's why I decided to change. And, and after a, a year almost, that's been really exciting. And yeah. the stock, it's at one, 105 now. It's <laughs> CGA so you're happy? On, yeah, I'm, I, I'm happy, but I'm happy for the organization, for, for the Quebec. You know, where we hire a lot of people, right? We, we invest into the lot of supplier in Montreal and Toronto. So for me, it's good for every, everyone. Yeah. And what, what can you describe your role? Is it similar to L'Oréal? Is it, there's a difference or? It's really similar to L'Oréal that the, when I was CDO, what we decided to do here, it's, uh, it's called Vice President of Transformation Office and Strategic Innovation. So pretty much if I want to keep it really simple because it's all about simplicity, it's I'm, I'm in the organization to deliver an end-to-end digital experience for consumer, right? So people, tech, process, and build a strategy of the future. And in parallel, I'm working as one team really close from marketing and sales. You know, that I guess why we're going so fast now it's because this team, we have no silo. We work together, we sit together, we drink together and driving the money, but now can focus on transformation, right? At L'Oréal, what, what was hard, it's that we try to do everything. Get the money, so keep your eyes on the money side. And after that, transforming at the same time. So once your, your, your shift that far, or your numbers go down, so you have to go get the business and after that, transform on the side. So... Now what, what we decided to do, it's really focus, going really fast on transformation, building the new marketing. And my KPI is more on the saving side and new incremental revenues. But the foundation, it's really Dominique Trudel who's driving it. Like, yeah. Right? So I, I think it's, uh, it's the best, best, best way to, to transform. Transformation, it's not something you, you do and it's, it's simple. You, know, you, you step on everybody's toes. Uh, you change ways of working. Yeah. People uh, feel like they will lose something and, and you need to be really uh, yeah. focused on that. But you've been doing this now for, for a few years, right? In oh, the yeah. sense of like having this, this hat of the shit disturber, let's say, right? Yeah. Like a transform, trans, transformational change within, yeah. within a larger organization. And I guess you have the benefit of a bit of pattern recognition. So without maybe revealing too many specifics, I'd love to hear of what are some of the, the, the broad challenges that you see, right? Like you, you mentioned some of them, right? Like I imagine cultures a big one, right? Uh, you know, the, the technology stack. So like some, some of the, the core building blocks, but curious, maybe different, right? I'm curious since you've been doing this for, for a while and you're like one, one of the, the you know, most well-known experts in the field. Yes. I see patro- pat- always the same pattern, actually. Yeah, so you're totally right. And, and maybe with your client, you see it. I would like to have a half of discussion on this, but what I see like all the time is culture first. Culture, you know, and, and, it would be bold what I will say, but if the actual culture that bring you where you are now might not bring you where you want to go, and you need to adapt or change your culture, leveraging what is good from your, con- your culture, but some things or behaviors that was working before is not working. L'Oréal, they change it totally. They change the culture. Can you imagine like this company? And they've done it. I guess you have to have the cura- courage, courage to do it. So culture is, is first. Second thing is IT. 
IT is a challenge everywhere. Back office, old back office, a lot of organization in, in, in Canada and Quebec can go into e-commerce and so on. They're not able to do it as fast because they have to invest into, I like to call it like the brother-in-law system. They create like 10 systems. They don't have documentation. They try to put new on top of old. And this slowing down the growth of our ecosystem in, in Canada and Quebec to reach opportunities of digital. This is first. It's not only in small organization, but big organization. And every big organization I saw, IT, little bit like business fighting with IT and vice versa. And this is a real topic. I want, I want really to, to state it. So in my new job now that, uh, what I've learned after all those years, it's uh, now I'm owning digital IT. Yeah. I don't like to say owning. It's not owning and leading or. Yeah. You have a bigger authority over it. And next, like you know, going back to the challenges we've seen is, um, broadly speaking, IT is, you know, like it's, it's IT. It, it serves an important operational role. But when it comes to some of the, 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 how should I say, chantier, the projects that you want to enable, they're much more software focused, right? So the biggest disconnect I've seen is when you talk to IT guys or, you know, a, 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 you know, a head of IT, they don't understand necessarily software and how it works, right? And then you'll have, you know, software agencies that are there and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're selling, let's say, stuff at very high margins or very high rates. And that ends up creating a lot of confusion as to like, what, what is the IT strategy? How do you develop it? There's like clearly a, 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 a lack of software understanding. So anyways, I, I don't know if it's the same thing that you've seen. Yeah, that, that's it. So it's exactly that. So IT right now, what, what we've done at L'Oréal 2 and so on. So SAP, you know, like the back office stuff, I guess IT, it's more waterfall approach. And I guess they need to control this, right? It's really important. But everything that is more front of the client, I like to call it service. I call it digital IT on my side. It's like Salesforce Cloud, 5.9, you know, for the IVR system, GCP, right? Everything that now we're going to a cloud, more cloud platform and SaaS. So for, for me, the hardest thing when we arrived at Kojeko that everything was on-prem, was, uh, so was custom development because that was the culture and it was good right at this moment. But now... You can have a vanilla solution within Salesforce, five nine, and being best practice into the market. Now we're implementing it, and it took us like in the for a POC, two months, and now we're running, and we see the the, the variables for business case, right? So, net net is how you bring from waterfall approach, big system to a SaaS cloud, agile and DevOps operation, right? So uh, right now we're really deep focused on. Ag- Team starting to be agile, but my team is agile, but the other part of the organization is not, right? So how you act, you scale that. Secondly, it's how you give in the end of the developers and the engineer being able to release easy, right? So DevOps. I truly believe in DevOps. I'm learning now. It's new for me. This is the way. Agile DevOps. Giving back the control of fast deployment, agile methodology, and stop waiting to be perfect market will tell you you're never perfect anyhow yeah yeah people on the on the show probably know that uh you know i love agile and obviously it's, it's unbiased because it's what we do <laughs> at work for strategy yeah, but i know i definitely hear uh hear you on that point or it's like you need to be able to move faster right especially when it comes to these customer facing solutions it's like you can't just say hey we're like it makes sense to do waterfall if you're building a big massive erp project right but it's it's not the case when you want to integrate some like you said digital it or customer facing program Exactly. Uh, maybe to go back to culture for a second, because that one is probably more opaque as to how, how you solve a cultural challenge, right? Because it's people, and those are the hardest problems are usually people problems. Not that IT isn't a people problem, but uh, usually you can build a business case and put some ROI numbers and usually, you know, get, like you said, just get authority and call the shots. Very different when people have to follow, you know, right? So the question of leadership is curious as to how you approach that first one. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a recipe, but... It's all about measurement. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's data at the end, right? This is how I see things. OKRs, Objective and Key Results. This is like, a, you have a really good book about it. I read it three times. It's so good, so good. And, and Objective and Key Results, you want to avoid silos. Usually the cultural problems, like the, if I rank it from one to 10, is one. Silos. Why? Because human. It's mm-hmm. human. But if you start measuring on performance, not only on, because when we arrived at, at Kojeko and it was okay at that moment was delivery on time, on quality, on budget, but on, so what 
So why you are doing it? You know, is it bringing the performance you are looking for? And when you bring the OKRs, you drive marketing together, product together, development together, and they understand that all this is an ecosystem. So to change culture, I guess, is to measuring what we're doing. Is it the right thing we do? And do we move the needle for customer or shareholders? So NPS for me, it's a really good KPI to start for if you want to be a customer centric organization. And on the business side is customer lifetime value, right? Because if you have a high NPS, we see correlation with CLV. So for me, if the, the staff starting at that, it's customer in mind, performance in the, so we're not playing office, we're putting our money where it makes sense. It will adapt the culture of more performance and you adapt after that behaviors and you reward this new behaviors. And this is, I guess, the best way to play. Rewards can be money, can be like uh, more accountability on project and so on. So for me, culture, it's, it's, it's funny. It starts with data. Understand what we do, what is the impact, and people see you reward it. And after that, you reward the right behaviors. I guess this is how I play it. Yeah, no, that's that's a super good insight. And in particular, I think with Kojiko, you do have the benefit of being able to track things like LTV, right? Versus uh, we, we, the control, measurement... we control the whole, the whole channel from prospect to uh, to retention. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Which is like that's a challenge when you know with L'Oréal, where it's like the the measurement there is a little bit different, right? Because you don't have you don't own the customer relationship. Or we were owning on D 2 C direct yeah. to consumer new brand e commerce side, and we launched many many stores. And the stores was to have the omni channel approach yeah. or harmonized approach, call it uh, whatever yeah. you want. But the store was pretty much a driver of data engagement within customer. It was a media for us. It was we, they found pretty much some stores as some pr uh, print and TV money, right? Yeah. So uh, I get. I, I guess the point. This was really good because within the data advanced analytics, we were able to predict yeah. and do algorithm. But you're right. When people were buying at Walmart, were losing. This part of yeah. uh, and how important for you is you know that that old adage of the the hippo right the highest paid person opinion right the person that calls the shots um, have you have you experienced times where that person is not bought in and they're they're or do they need to really be bought in for it to work so curious to hear you transformation is about human first right and that's what we're saying like pretty much uh, since a while change management and so on. Um, culture will bring like, uh, you know, like authority and, uh, so I'm the, <laughs> the big guy. So I decide. So that's the other reason why I used to start to, to connect the dots on, uh, you know, digital IT. So now we have control on our code, but in the standard working with IT and we build a data practice. So actually in the transformation office, we have the data single source of truth. And if the single source of truth is good, you, tr you want to make sure that you bring self-serve BI, right? So you deploy, you give access to the organization to become more data-driven organization where people can take decisions based on data and not only intuition. So I guess a good use case on this is A-B testing, right? So at L'Oréal, uh, a lot of opinionated people, strong leaders and so on, it, they have historical and so on, and they say, I like blue. I like I don't like this icon here, but on the web where able to say, okay, thank you very much. Let's do two pages. Let's stop the meeting because it can last for two hours. Let's stop the meeting. Let's do two pages. Consumer will decide and data will drive decision. But we need to keep intuition. But data needs to help intuition. Yeah. So for me, net-net, my answer is data will lower too much power of the IS paid person opinion. Yeah. So the way to convince that person, right, the CEO, he or she, you know, will be convinced by, like you said, the single source of truth. It's like, hey, what we're doing is working and it's in your benefit to continue and to And if it's invest. not working, it would be the first guy to say it. Yeah. So within the data, you know, when, when we started a self-serve BI approach and some companies at work, uh, meeting changed totally. You know, you, you're able to avoid smoke show. Sales guy arriving, and I love sales guys. Right? I'm a sales, well, sales guy. But smoke show everybody have the data, right? So if it suck, it suck. Everybody knows, right? Yeah. So you have to work on the real problems. So for me, it's not every organization are willing to do that. I think like organization that will win will have, yes, the intuition and the highest paid person is not for nothing is there, right? Yeah. But back it up with data, advanced analytics, leveraging AI capabilities to, yeah. to think differently, 
on different options and test it in the market fast. That's why you need agility and speed. I guess it's changing the game. Yeah, yeah. It's like you, you spoke about, uh, you know, the uh, how in a, in a company people can, you know, tell themselves a lot of story. And I call it like business storytelling via PowerPoints, right? You see this a lot in companies where it's like you sit down, Everywhere. You, have, you have a big two-hour meeting and it's like it's a nice fancy PowerPoint. But the, like you said, the source of truth, which I'm going to steal that term. It's like in terms of like what is actually accurate, right? In terms of the data, that's that's obviously a great starting point. And it's a great enabler for for the rest to happen. Voila. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good uh, recap there. So, uh, so talk about, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you're obviously keeping your eye out on the industry. You're an investor. You're involved a lot in, in the overall ecosystem. Curious as to like, what are you excited about in terms of like coming technologies or coming practices at large? Like, what are you, what are you reading about right now? Yeah. Globally or for uh, the telco industry? For yourself personally. For myself. It doesn't need to be tech, but. Yeah. Yeah. So. What I'm really interested, I guess everybody is, investor everybody, and I guess it's like a, you need to understand what is the good and the bad on that is AI, of course. Right? You know, like Réseau Contact was all about data sets, search, trying to bring the right person with the other one, right? So the same logic for cosmetic. Some person have challenges. So how we resolve it within the right product. So it's always the same kind of mechanics or framework. And now AI or advanced analytics and AI starting to bring so many opportunities that we're not able to do before. And after that, you know, all the cloud aspect of things, machine is there, science is there, talent is there. This, I'm really interested about that. So I'm reading, I'm, I'm doing stuff. Example, you know, like I have a side, side things I'm doing for Kajeko. It's proactive maintenance, uh, the network maintenance. So the best way to don't have to answer a call because you have an outage, it's not have no outage, right? So how AI, you know, in different region of, uh, in the North, you will have like different uh, weather variables and so on. So maintenance of your network will be different. How you can be proactive to avoid an outage, right? Predictive maintenance. Yeah. So this is one take. Uh, secondly, how you predict and so on. So this AI things, I feel a lot of opportunities. At L'Oréal, we've done a forecasting tool. It, it was just at the beginning of things, you know, we're able to ingest 20 sources of data to predict demand. So this I'm really high, you know, you can see, I, I love it. Second thing I'm looking now at to invest into a company called Ubu Drink, um, and is a CBD drink with CBD. So, uh, it's in California. It's Quebec, Quebec uh, co-founder. They're in California now and they just like driving that stuff. So, I like the thing of, I don't like to say augmented human, but I feel that we've got a lot of natural ingredient, ingredients that can make your, your life better. So I, I'm looking about that. I'm looking about agility, best way to work, because so many people have ideas, but at the end, uh, how you execute it. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed about flawless execution or delivery excellence, right? Yeah. So AI, some stuff more like how we can help humans globally having impact and, looking to invest so it, i love this part yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't know the cbd space outside of being a, the occasional consumer i imagine but uh, how did you fall into into the drink <laughs> actually uh it's always my life is like that actually <laughs> it's more like you're in one place timing uh it was a guy i met a couple of years ago in a, and and now they said hey, this is what i'm doing i say oh wow and it was really like uh so he gave, sent me his, his deck and I start looking at CBD and, you know, that the way they do it is it can really help people to reduce anxiety and so on. It's not like a, it's a functional drink to try to make happen, right? So yeah. I think this is a, something there. But the point is, it's more like it's emerging things. L legally, it's gray. So I think it's really interesting. It's risky, but it's it's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's and it really helps for... people at the end. It's good. Yeah. And what do you think is happening in the space? So you mentioned AI, you, you, you mentioned obviously cannabis space, which are you're in, in super growth on, on very, very different industries. But what do you think is happening in the space that is uh, misunderstood or warrants more attention? Yeah, a really good question. So many things happen now on the tech side, on services. You know, like I'm really fascinated by Elon Musk. Like I guess a lot of people for, like me looking at it is uh, I just purchased a Tesla on online, right? Oh, so, nice. Yeah, which, which model? So uh, Model 3, because uh, I don't use the car. It's more like I'm, the, I'm taking a train. I'm trying to be like as mo as most like relevant in my, the way I consume for the environment. So, but yeah, so yeah, it's more like a toy, right? But I've done the whole process. 
buying a car online. Interesting, right? It's uh, like more than sixty thousand dollars buy, and but the service is really bad. After service is really bad. Actually, uh, they should hire us. We can do a good <laughs> job. Like I, I sent a, a, a note to Elon Musk on this actually, because the, their experience is shit after because they, I guess they're the demand offers and demand they're not able to produce enough. But this electricity, you know, like kind of uh, by its AI, it's it's self driving cars. Disrupting tra transportation. This is something that we need to really to look at because it makes sense for society. So this, I'm really looking at it. All the sharing economy, you know, uh, Airbnb and so on. I'm going to Portugal, like uh, it's and it's my wife that just organizing everything. But Airbnb meeting, you know, like so she set up like now it's online, it's happening. It's trust people. I guess this is really good driver that society start to use technology for good. So this, I guess we need to look at it and how we can expand that, right? So uh, that's that's where I am. So clean tech, totally clean tech. Um, clean tech, sharing economy, being more human, using technology for goods. Yeah, and have you, I know it's your only one year in, but have you have you started thinking about the, the next move or is it too soon? <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, Right now, I'm really laser focused on delivering. Vision is clear. Uh, we present to the board uh, the, the strategic uh, plan. And now we're just executing, like phew, building the team and so on. So I'm really like focused on that because I'm an entrepreneur, right? So uh, it needs to work. If it's not working for the shelters, for the consumer, for the employees, I will not get really a good pay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but at the end, the next, my dream, and I guess everybody... It's good when you have a dream, you know, so it's not everybody knows it, but I know that in the future, I want to be independent. I want to continue doing angel investment, leveraging my network that I build around the world within L'Oréal. And I, I, I want to come back uh, driving my own business, of course. And around, I want my kids to feel that the world is small, right? So that's my goal. So I learn a lot from time to time and now uh, I guess that will be the next step and hopefully have a good exit with uh, Ubu drinks <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah, I think a great place to, to end it off Marty maybe one last final question is where, where can people find out more about yourself and the work that you're doing yes uh, actually uh, not really sexy LinkedIn so Martin Ubu on LinkedIn and I'm answering every message people send sales guy everybody I'm answering that's part of my I don't know it's my dad maybe teach me to always answer everybody <laughs> so LinkedIn and Marty Boy is a bit or 008 on on uh, Twitter and on Facebook so uh, I'm pretty much everywhere it's been my my course since a while right so and thank you very much for the uh, this interview actually uh, we should go uh we should continue to chat together off uh, this this uh, record was really fun absolutely yeah so yeah round two uh, during uh, you know when when you talked about starting a, starting a business i think would be very uh, very interesting as well so yeah no, yes. i appreciate your time martin and i know you're a busy guy so uh, i appreciate uh, your generous insights today yeah, and and just to conclude i wish this can help people that listen to that to go big and go home right so go big so many opportunities tech is changing consumer behavior is changing so it's open, right? So you're old, you're young, go live your dream. It's happening. And if you got a good idea, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, man. Yeah, thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Point of No Return podcast. Never miss an episode by clicking on the subscribe button on iTunes or Google Play.